Welcome back. Uh, you're watching the June 16 special broadcast. My name is Tabo Malukwane. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Let's pick up from where we left off. Uh, now, the apartheid schools were segregated racially in terms of the people within them, uh, where they were located and the ways in which they were legislatively defined, ensuring that uh, you know they were schooled in racial molds. Looking at how schools are today, we have issues such as crumbling infrastructure, teacher shortages and a lack of educational progress. Only 20% of public schools are properly functional with the enormous gap between the results they achieve and the outcomes of other 80% of uh, public schools. We're still joined in studio by our resident guest at uh, Mzimkulu Khalukani. And, uh, you know, uh, just to give us a sense of uh, how we've progressed in terms of um, the, um, uh, you know, infrastructure, particularly looking at the historical context. And also Talita Budram, who is the inventor of the solar desk, and she is joining us now in studio to expand our conversation. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank Thanks for staying on. Me. Thanks. <laughs> much appreciated. Uh, Talita, I want to start with you, you know, maybe just to understand the work that you do. Okay, so I'm from MyDesk Global. So the MyDesk is a revolutionary wheelie school bag that converts into a desk and a chair with a solar light and USB charging portal for children in the rural areas. So according to UNESCO, in South Africa alone, there are over 3 million children without desks, 95 million children in Africa, and just over 400 million children globally that do not have a desk at school. Not having a desk affects their handwriting, their focus, their concentration, their overall academic ability, their homework delivery, and can be very compromising of the child's dignity when they are expected to sit on cold, muddy floors for the entirety of the school day. Mm. I mean, the issue of infrastructure is so broad because it, you know, includes things such as resources, um, you know, schooling equipment, sanitation, just to name a few. Um, your invention is changing many kids' lives in uh, the townships, uh, you know. I want us to know what inspired the idea and uh, what kind of changes that are you aiming to bring, uh, you know, with this invention? So the my desk actually started out as my science project when I was in grade 10. Um, my dad and I were actually watching the news and we had seen a segment on children without desks at school and are sitting on cold concrete floors. And I knew I had the science project coming up and, and, and I knew that I wanted to make a difference and I could use this opportunity to make that difference. So we got to researching and we saw the stats which were appalling the three million children in South Africa alone. And we first made, the, the first prototype was made out of cat litter boxes put together and spade handles that would flip out and yeah that was the the first science project my desk and it won gold at the ESCOM science fair and from there on as we kept uh, as all science projects end up in the garage or in the shed once you're done my mom actually saw the potential in the my desk and she then started to 3d print it and mold it and get it out there because it needed to make that difference Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then we started adding features like the chair and the solar light. Mr. Lelukani, let me bring you uh, to this conversation before we get to uh, one of the reports that was compiled by one of our reporters there. Um, how do you make of such an invention? I mean, you can simply uh, unfold this desk and then put it, uh, you know, it, it's very efficient as uh, we, we, we're seeing the visuals on screen. Um, the importance of innovations and bringing infrastructure. Township schools struggling with infrastructure at this stage. Uh, we shouldn't be talking about this 29 years after democracy. Um, we're still seeing schools without uh, tables, desks, broken windows. What do you make of such inventions? Do you think that uh, we need to be able to invent more as a country? Yeah, definitely we need to invent more as a country. And uh, if we, 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 our government in particular is not focused on uh, innovations and inven inventions, then there's no growth in the country. But let's speak about township schools. 
they lack infrastructure on a very serious note. Parents are using transport to take their children to schools where the infrastructure is okay. So inventions are necessary. Probably I'm looking at this, it's a desk, but if we were going to get proper desks, big one, this can come in as a, a cap stopper yeah. when we, we are seriously having 60 children in a class and they, they lack chairs. I think around March this year uh, in Jonasbeck East, there was a march by learners because mm. they didn't have uh, desks and chairs. So this innovation is but a tiny response to the bigger need that is there at schools. Mm. We need desks, we need chairs. Now with the shocking statistics of poor infrastructure in schools in South Africa, uh, our reporter Nom Zabala Zomduga has compiled a report, you know, detailing uh, just more of uh, the shocking statistics of poor infrastructure in schools in the country. Let's take a look. Kulonyaka usu kulwesi zwe lolu chaku nyene nyanga yolu chaku pioze lwa panzi komkolo oti. Uku kaulezi sa inkulule ko yolu chakwa zokoko sho kwenze la ikamfa elizinzi leyo. Kotwa ulu chalu satinga matuba we misebenzi no kakasho. Jengo ba izinga lenzwe la nge sholi kope kumyinge ka 32.9%. We face so many challenges as a youth, especially Tina, extension 11, we more exposed into drugs and majority are unemployed, some are dropouts. And then, guna banya ba fisu kuya skoleni, but because of the access they don't have. Another thing I would like mostly, still cancel alezu, recipes cards, abinads, as I'm a point of view, as a youth, no ma sim tuinga, sim tole officin, because it's hardly there. Ngizenje la cha su tola i information, and I think seize in terms of wooting up lalum sebe in zi to upskill myself. An opportunity also for me to ask relevant questions that pertains to Uguti. If maybe let's say you need business, you more want to make sure that is registered. We are not having any structures. We own Uguti. We are going to approach us so that was Uguti now as a young person was to win and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, so hence I'm here. It's just to encourage youth Uguti, basmele, start their own businesses, start ama cooperatives. Uh, seek for e, e, e further education, babe and nama businesses and things like that because we cannot be waiting as e youth, waiting for amateur job opportunities, waiting for e government to do things on, on our own. I have learned to go I'm saying our country, Pezulu, Ugala Panty, Kangani Kangani, isn't those logos, Gupu, Ganjalo, Ganjalo. For instance, um, it takes shop. You see, you can maybe go to my rural areas, man, like Ekasi, and then oh, Vulenje is Paza, like Amakula. So, and I feel like Labant Lava, they take our opportunities. Maratina, as young youth, as a full now we don't want to grow, we don't want to the full color pants, and then we're expecting is in the good season, it's Maratina. So, we don't want to, we don't want to work, yeah, we don't want to learn again. Naba fundi ezi kolwe ni aboneli seka ngali zinga li mfundu wa baifumana yonjengo bakwe zinye inda wa bafundi benga ikamli mfundu ese mkangatuni. Kwa ye kuseko umsanza pakati kwezi kolo zika hulumende nezo za bukala. 
Doleyo ipe laisenza ulu chaluzi velubo na ikamba ilimfili ba. We still have a long way to go because as we check the private schools and the public schools, they have a big difference in terms of their education system, their ways of teaching as well. So maybe if our schools in public, our schools in the public are given the opportunity to actually have what people, what the learners have in the private schools, it will be actually quite cool because now there will be an equality as well. And also like... The education system is not always perfect, but if we progress it into a, a much more steeper, steeper way, it will be. Many thanks to our reporter there, Nomza Balazo Mduka, for compiling that comprehensive uh, report touching on various serious issues there. Uh, you know, the lack of infrastructure, particularly at various schools there. Talita, um, you know, I want to bring it to this conversation, um, looking at uh, the convenience of this in you know invention i mean you can wheel it outside you can see it has some wheels there um and then also you know just reacting to mr talukani you know talking about how it can bridge the gap particularly in overcrowded schools yes so the my desk actually has ruggedized wheels for rural terrain and can be wheeled from one point to the other but also can be used as a backpack if needed and as it opens up it, it is convenient because in overcrowded classrooms the kids are able and the teachers are actually able to move their classrooms to outside when it's not raining and the weather permits so that they have their space to properly work because each child is given their own individual desk with a chair and they are given that opportunity where they are not in crowded hot containers or anything like that mm. and they can focus. How has been the, I mean, the experience of uh, young people particularly using this and also the response thereof? Look, it has been an amazing and a very rewarding experience to see the child's reaction when the desk opens out and then you put the solar lights on. It's been incredibly rewarding, not only for MyDesk Global, but for the sponsors, such as the British High Commission that has sponsored some desks to Goza Primary yesterday for Youth Day. Um, so we work with clients, CSI and CSR, um, sectors or even individuals wanting to make donations and we can get the Midas done in their corporate colors and branding for brand awareness which also gets them involved in the movement and makes them feel like they are actually making a difference in a child's life because one Midas lost the entirety of their schooling career which is 12 years so one Midas carries them through and it makes that impact that it has intended to make so yeah well, Talita, thanks very much. Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, just closing remarks, how can people get in touch with you? So you can visit our website, www.mydesglobal.com, or you can uh, email info at mydesglobal.com. It's M-I-D-E-S-K. Can you repeat that again? Yeah, it's uh, M-I-D-E-S-K, global. Global. Yes. Thank you very much for making the time. Thank you so much. Talita Butram there, uh, just talking to us about uh, invention, uh, you know, hair invention, particularly this a very convenient desk that uh, we have in studio here. Uh, and also we are joined by um, also um, Mr. Atalukani, who is our resident um, guest for today. He will continue with, uh, with us as we go through to, um, you know, the other segments. Let's uh, listen to this package that we've compiled for you before we go for an ad break. was a law that governed the education of black South African children. It was part of the government's system of apartheid which sanctioned racial segregation and discrimination against non-whites in the country. From about the 1930s, the vast majority of schools serving black students in South Africa were run by missions and often operated with state aid. Most children, however, did not attend these schools. In 1949, the government appointed a commission to study and make recommendations for the education of native South Africans. The challenges were with the threats that were coming from outside, or were the things that would make you um, very scared while you were at school. School is school. School is a, it's a fun place. Young people enjoy to be at school. We enjoyed school then, because I don't say it was safe. But under conditions you are to accept, in those terms you will say it's safe, but it was not safe. 
And we, we went to school, we, 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 we loved it, we did, we did well. It just when the political situation changed that made school even more unsafe. Because what you say, there are impimpies everywhere, there are whistleblowers that we don't even know about, they are planted amongst us as young people. You become politically conscious, you start to discuss about it, tomorrow you are arrested, you disappear from your community or people, only to be discovered dead at some point. That's the trigger of the mobilization of youth to reject <clears throat> this treatment that has been perpetuated for many years over our parents and our, our ancestors became very obvious in 1974 when the Bantu Education Act was introduced that made Africans and English compulsory in schools. The ESL and Commission report urged the government to take charge of education for black South Africans in order to make it part of a general socio-economic plan for the country. In addition, the report stated that the schooling should be tailored towards the needs and values of the cultures of the communities in which the schools were located. It was not an enabling education that we had desired or our parents had experienced before 1948. Because once apathy took over Aislinn and Fervood and whoever was Minister of Education had their own intentions about the black child. Because we were seen and designed to be the labor force of the apartheid society. See? So, 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 so that lack of an intention not to develop the young people to learn anywhere to get to was to create that laborer. But over time, they realized in the 70s that they need an educated laborer to serve them even much more better than the uneducated laborer. Prescriptions of the commission were generally followed by the Bantu Education Act, which under the act, the Department of Native Affairs headed by Hendrik Fervoort was made responsible for the education of black South Africans. In 1958, the Department of Bantu Education was established. The act required black children to attend government schools. In 1948, schools were church-aided schools, the, the, aided by government, run by churches, and it was free education. Fervoot comes in with his intentions. We are reading today when we understand the context that the black child have no space in the global community. Why do you have to give him quality education? What he needs is just an education that will make him a drawer of water and a hewer of wood. Those trappings are still seen in our education today. The imbalance in the new democracy is still showing. Black schools are what you are seeing today, white schools are something different. So, so Africans, was really not an issue, it was a trigger to the young people of imposing a foreign language on them to learn about. Many did well, some are still doing well in Africa, unfortunately I'm not, uh, but some are doing well, they're still studying it is Dutch and they're continuing with it voluntarily. It was forced on us, it was not voluntary, and that angered us. Teaching was to take place in the student's native tongue, though the syllabus included classes in Afrikaans and English. Instruction was mandated in needlework, handcraft, planting, soil conservation, as well as in arithmetic, social skills, and Christian religion. The education was aimed at training the children for the manual labor and menial jobs that the government deemed suitable for those of their race. It was explicitly intended to inculcate the idea that black people were to accept being subservient to white South Africans. A servitude kind of, of, of education system to serve the master, serve, serve the white man. And today, I look at it, it doesn't change much. On June 16, 1976, the situation reached a boiling point. Thousands of students from various schools in Soweto took to the streets to protest against the compulsory use of Afrikaans as a medium of instruction in schools. The protest initially started peacefully, 
but tensions escalated when police forces responded with brutal force using tear gas, batons and firearms against the unarmed demonstrators. Tragically, the police opened fire on the students, leading to numerous injuries and death. 